Hello and welcome to the video. Today we've got the latest in our series of videos showing you some amazing features of Google Workspace Education Plus, which is the premium version of Google Workspace. Just before we start, if you're interested to try this for free for 60 days, contact James or myself. Uh, my email is dan at appsevents.com or james at appsevents.com and we'll set you up with a free, no obligation trial for 60 days. So James, Dynamic Groups, uh, what is it and, and why should educators be interested in it? Yeah, hi, Dan. Thanks. So recently we had a question about how a school could more easily manage their groups. Some schools might be using AD to sync their groups, in which case they're being managed externally. They might be using GAM, for example. They maybe have a, a master CSV file with all of their employee information, all their teacher, their staff information in one place. But they wanted to know how to more easily manage their groups and move people around. This school in particular, they had multiple campuses under one domain. And when a staff member moved from one campus to another, they needed to update their emailing lists to match which campus they were now at. And this is where dynamic groups comes in really, really well. So every user, and we'll, we'll have a look at this in a moment, every user has a profile which shows multiple fields. For example, it shows the building they're in, the department they're in. If you manage those profile details very well and you keep them up to date, we can use dynamic groups, which are essentially updated automatically based upon that profile information. Great, well, let's take a look. Okay, here we are in the admin console and we're gonna first go to look at user management to see the different profiles that can be updated, the profile information that can be updated, and then we'll go through to looking how we can create a dynamic group based upon that profile information. The first thing you want to do is go through to your list of users. You can see our big list of users here. We can filter. And I'm gonna locate this user, happens to be myself, and I'm gonna click on my user account. Now again, just a quick reminder, this is a demo domain, there's no personal information here or private information. Right here we are with our user account, and what we need to do is to access the profile information. It's under user information here. So I'm just gonna click on that. And you can see right now that this user doesn't yet have a secondary email, doesn't have a phone number. All of those can be updated here. Now I'm particularly interested in, if I scroll down a little bit, we have employee information here. Now employee information, we can add employee IDs, you can add job titles, we can add in building ID, floor name, even down to floor section. And of course, you can use these fields to manage your own information. So rather than thinking about building, you might want to consider campus. Rather than thinking about floor name, you might want to consider grade level. It's entirely up to the school how they use these fields. For now, what we're gonna look at, we're gonna use the, depart the department field to create a dynamic group. And you can see here already that my user information shows that I'm in the finance department. So we've already created this, we've already added a department. If we wanted to change that, you can simply change the name of the department and then obviously click on save. Now, obviously doing this for every user from the admin console is quite time consuming. You could also manage this uh, using GAM, for example. You could update all of your users using GAM using a, a master spreadsheet or CSV that you have externally. There are other ways to manage user information. I, mean, I, guess, gonna... I guess a lot of it would depend on the size of the school. I mean, if let's say you've got 20 or 30 staff in your school, you could probably once a semester or, or even once a month, you could just go through and manually update this. You know, when you're getting over 100 staff, maybe 200, 300, maybe you want to start thinking about using one of these tools. But you could still do it. I mean, it, it's, you know, if you put it in a spreadsheet and you, and you, as long as you have it in your procedure to periodically go and update it, I think it's, you could do it manually even for a larger school. That's a really good point, Dan. And actually, uh, Dean Stokes, who's now at Google, but before he was with Apps Events, he managed a big district of schools through the admin console. And I think he had up to 50 different schools on the admin console. And that would be a great use case for, for dynamic groups. Yeah. But obviously not managing those individual users in the admin console would be far too many. Right, next, under directory, we have groups. So we'll click on groups. 
And this is where your group management comes in. You can create a regular group using the create, create group button. But you'll notice for Education Standard and Education Plus users, they have Create Dynamic Group. And that's the one we're going to look at now. Yeah, and just Create to recap, dynamic. this is only, this you, if you have the free version, which is called Fundamentals, you do not have access to the dynamic groups. Yeah, that's right. So to create our query that will filter through our users, what we do, we come down to this drop-down box here with condition, and we look at all the possible conditions that we could match against. The one we're looking for right now is department. So I'm just going to scroll down here to department. We select department. And you have a couple of options. It could be equal to, equals ignoring case. So if you think that your, um, your data is not, is not case sensitive, you might want to choose that. Equals, in this case, finance. Okay, so we're only going to create one condition, but you could have multiple conditions. It could be the finance department within a, a particular campus, in which case you would add another condition. Now you can see down here, this is a cell code for this query. Up until last year, you had to code this into the API. So this just gives you a cell reference for that query. Now what we can do is we can actually, once we've created our query, we can preview our query. And as I scroll down here, we can see we only have one member right now. I've only updated the finance department for one member myself. And I'm already in that group. So the preview is showing correctly. You probably want to do a quick check just to make sure there's any, not any users in there that you, you don't want to be in there. And then, of course, we would go ahead and create dynamic group. You give it a group name. Just for reference, I've, I've called it finance dynamic. And you can give it a group email as well, because obviously this is going to be used as an email list. And then we save. OK, and that is our dynamic group now created. And what will happen whenever a user gets moved into the finance department, they will be updated to join that finance group. Fantastic. Thanks very much, James. That was really interesting. Um, just a quick link at the bottom of the screen. If you want to do the free trial, um, 60 days, you can try it for free, no obligation. We can deactivate it straight away. Uh, if you don't want to keep using it, go to appsevents.com forward slash workspace. James, thanks very much. Thanks, Dan.